What's up Rangers, welcome to the Geek Chest, my name's Steve and today we're going to be doing an updated custom video of the Playmates Godzilla vs. Kong Skullcrawler. Now, uh, initial one I did, really enjoyed the way it looked, super happy with the color scheme. Uh, but now we're going to step it up a little bit to make it a little bit more Skull Island accurate. Uh, this one's definitely more on the Kong's, Godzilla vs. Kong side with the red here. So if you guys have seen that video, uh, paint job will be mostly the same, but we're going to be um, doing some extra work on here, like filling the gap in and adding the spikes to the tail. Also, if you guys hear some background noises, it's cold in Michigan, so my thermos might, or my ear might kick back on. And I also got my uh, 3D printer running because we're making some beams. And I'm probably going to try to make a ton for this guy. Um, because one thing, it doesn't have the ton like you see in the movie. Um, and I think it'd be cool to maybe try to 3D print that, and that would be something we could add to this. Um, that'd be a little different than just like trying to sculpt one. Uh, but we will have to fill in the gaps and add the little spiky bits to the tails. First and foremost, we gotta get this guy out of the package. Also trying a different set with the camera, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I got it kind of painting over top of my uh, 3D printer currently, so I'm trying, I gotta make sure I don't smack it. First, we got to take this, so what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna attach, oh god, upside down. We gotta attach this to here, and then we're gonna fill in the seams so you don't notice, you never know that this was actually supposed to be battle damage. Now, <laughs> problem with that is if you, so say I just took my epoxy putty and just filled it in. Uh, because this could be removable, you could maybe, uh, a decent amount, a decent knock or something would just pop it off, remove all your putty, and you'd be kind of screwed. So, I'm going to actually just permanently glue this down. Uh, what I got here is some Loctite and my accelerant. If you guys want to know, it's Bob Industries Instaset. So, I'm going to put some glue here and then Instaset on the back of the... Actually, you know what? I'm, I lied. I'll probably do that backwards because I want to be able to kind of rest it in and it'll harden. Decent liberal application of glue. We're going to be covering this a lot up anyways. One good spritz. And then it goes on like so. And then I'm just going to push it down, hold it in place for a few seconds. Nice thing about the Insta set is it's very quick. So, should be good. Um, then it'll harden a little better over time. Uh, but it'll let you. You're able to work with it. So now I'm going to carefully unplug this thing because I kind of need my hair dryer. Because in order to put my sculpt on, I don't think he can't be wet. And he's golden. So this is pretty much all set and good for sculpting. Uh, the tail, I'm going to have to look up some photos because we're going to have to add some wires or some kind of structure. Uh, which will more than likely be, uh, I usually keep paper clips around. So let me call for the paper clips to put through. And I gotta see how many little spiky bits I need. So we'll be right back. Alright, that looks a little bit more appropriate. So now, mix up some putty. Get the sculpting. Now the sculpting for this should be fairly simple. Uh, it's mainly just going to be getting some little triangle pieces on here and just squishing them out. Triangle squish it. Squish, squish, squish. Uh, which I'll show you guys here in just a sec. Got my two-part epoxy putty. You guys can see here. So what you do? Uh, I don't need a, a lot for this, but I will be sculpting something else while I'm doing this. I'm gonna make a little bit of a bigger ball. Equal parts the other. Got the pretty good on the first try. Mix it together. So I'm just gonna take this. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna make little snakes. It's got twirling on my fingers. So I want to get little strips. Just start applying it into my grooves. Once I go over the entire thing, I'll take my uh, little ball styluses and start kind of grooving all the excess that I'm not going to really need. And then also, to hopefully help to pound a bit of this clay into the crevices. I'm not certain how well it's going to work on these back ones. I might have to go about this a little differently for those. 
but we'll see. Alright, now he's sort of filled in our gap. Just gonna keep kind of working it in there. Now what I'm kind of doing is getting my finger wet, taking a little bit of this epoxy putty, just kind of smashing in the parts to kind of fill in these little seams that I'm not really uh, gonna be able to do with my stylus. It's a bit messy, but a lot of this you can kind of scrape off when you're done. <laughs> Alright, so real quick, made a little ton for the guy. More character than what originally. Glued the top section onto it. Uh, what I've been using uh, to make the ton anyways is it's this, this uh, lantern cables. Um, what I do is just kind of cut them to size and then glue them together. <laughs> That's pretty much about it. Uh, Screw it up. I should have shown how I was doing this to begin with, so I guess I can show you guys real quick here. But all you do, you just want to cut three sections. Doesn't really matter the, matter the length too much. And then all I'm doing is getting them close to each other. Like so. Again, doesn't really have to be pretty, just try to get it about as close as humanly possible. And then take something with a little bit of weight on it. I got this Dremel here. And then you guys can hopefully see, but they're still sorted together. I kinda got pushed a little bit when I put the Dremel on top. I'm just gonna try to get them as close to each other. And then what I do is take some glue. Put it over top. Again, trying to keep the lanterns as close as possible. And then if you got an extra piece laying around, which I thought I did, I guess I don't. Take an extra piece if you got it laying around, just kind of smooth out the glue. Try to get that as best I can in the garbage. And now I got some accelerant, so I don't have to wait for it to dry. They just kind of observe it. It'll start kind of bubbling up a bit once it uh, starts to cure. And then... Good to go. You'll see. Kind of got one solid piece now. So then if you want to make your ton, you just cut them at an angle. Usually I make the back ones a little shorter. And then stick that inside the mouth. Now, this might not fit normally. Uh, what you're going to have to do is I cut the back just to make it level. And then you're going to want to cut about into the halfway point of each of these little sections. So, cut that part. Cut that part. And then you can kind of lift that section up. Cut the entire thing off. So what this will do is there's that little hinge there. This, when you cut it, it won't hinder the hinge. Or hinder the, hinder the hinge? And then you just glue the bottom section of the... Then you just glue the tongue to the mouth. That's pretty much about it. Alright, so we got the Tamiya Putty on them again. Uh, I had to do an extra layer, but hopefully, as I can see, it looks like it hit the joints a little better. So now we sand, wherever I put my sandpaper. Um, currently, I am using 400 grit. I thought I was using 600. Guess I'm using 400 grit. Um, what you want to wet, and I don't got any water. <laughs> Bless it. Hold on a sec. All right, so what I do, take my sandpaper, you get it wet. And then I'm just going to go to town trying to smooth this out. Nothing too complicated. But all I'm really doing is just trying to get all the high points out of here. All the parts that don't look like it's skin. I'm just smoothing it out. Nothing complicated. Bit of a tedious process. 
Um, pure reason why I'm not using a higher grit because I don't really want to remove a bunch of plastic from the figure. But like I was saying, uh, I just kind of gen the sand these guys down just till I get enough smooth sections. So when I go to paint it, it is an uh gonna show it there. Because once you cover this with some primer, it's gonna hide a lot of this. And to be honest, it's looking pretty good. Uh, get my paper towel to wipe it off a bit, just to double check. Also, I personally don't really worry too much about going layer over layer over layer. Like, usually when you sand, you want to sandpaper it uh, to make it smooth. So you would start with like a high grit to remove a bunch of stuff, then you move up in grits. Uh, so like, I should go to like a 600x, sand it a little bit more, and then go to a thousand to kind of polish it out. But I don't really want to do that with this. And currently I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm not really noticing any other high points except maybe right there. Because I'm just looking for sections that don't look like skin. And right there is the only one I'm really noticing. So next will be uh, primary. Which, if you guys have seen the previous one, I it's mostly the same thing so I'm gonna just spray paint or um, just airbrush them with some gray uh, paint and then we'll come back to doing the dry brushing and pretty much how I updated the paint job a little bit on this guy from the previous video all right so real quick just gonna show you guys kind of what I'm doing for this part is I'm just gonna be dry brushing a pavement color over top of them it's just a uh, really dark gray I'm just going to lightly just kind of, actually not, kind of want a bigger brush. This will take too long. There we go. I want this brush. All right, so I'm just going to take my brush, a little bit of paint on it, and just start lightly going over all the details. Plus, with the Tamiya Tami Putty, when you first look at it, you can still see a couple of like the little... You can definitely see some of the sections where it was putty, but doing this is definitely going to help kind of blend it all together. And again, kind of make it look very skin tone-esque. Then once I'm done doing this, I'll go back over it uh, with a little bit of a brown. Just to give it a little bit more highlights like what you see in the movie. Yeah, let's just get everything to the color that I want. But the reason why I don't put a lot of paint on the brush is just so that it's not going to get into all the nooks and crannies. That's okay. And then you can kind of do this as dark as you want. Because your initial run isn't going to be super dark. Like it all depends on how much paint you get on the brush. But you can always go back over over the figure with, with more layers and layers depending on how much you really want to change the color on it. And for me, I definitely want this gal to be dude, person, to be a little darker. So I definitely want it to stand out. But I'm going to go through and dry brush the entire thing. And then we'll cut back to the more detailed sections. All right, so kind of hopping around some of my stuff. But I'll show you guys uh, with the skull crawler. I've already started painting them uh, with some of the detailing. Uh, this is just a... Close my lid. Maybe. <laughs> uh, it's a parchment. I'm just going over top of the areas that's going to be the lighter coloring. Uh, so you can see on this arm, I've already started kind of doing it. And I'm just going back over in a couple of spots just to brighten up the colors a bit. But pretty much what, you, what I'm really doing for this entire thing is I'm just dry brushing. Uh, I still got some paint on my, extra paint on my brush. I think I'm just trying to bring up some of the colors here and there. 
And then when I'm done, I'll go back over it with a, uh, I'll highlight it with a little bit of a yellow. I won't go super crazy. Uh, there'll be a couple spots I'll probably have to touch up when I'm done, because usually there is. But I'm doing all my little detailing now, so when I go to seal all the joints, I'll, uh, I don't really have to worry about it too much. I'll just be primarily just focusing on my, uh, Oh my, whatchamacallit, <laughs> the uh, the pavement color, the really dark gray is what I'm going to be filling the jointed areas with. But for the spiky bits here, I'm just kind of going at an angle so that it doesn't fill in the detailing. And the detailing for the most part pretty much goes up and down, so I want to go opposite of the way it's moving. So I know I'm not going to fill in a bunch of the crevices. And it's the opposite for the legs. So the legs, everything's horizontal. So I want to go vertical with this part. So I'm just going to kind of extend it down because that's more or less what you see in the movie. And then I'm kind of just wrapping it around, focusing on... These bits here and you don't have to be super precise with this because for the most part from the look in the movie she uh, kind of uh, it'll fade so if you get a little bit of extra paint here and there just a couple of spots it's not gonna really kill the overall look Yeah, it kind of makes it look a little more natural. Uh, also, she's got a little bit on the knuckles here. So, adding a little bit to there. On the fingertips. And then, just like with uh, some of the cheaper paints, uh, this stuff goes on pretty well, but I still like to... Usually go over it once or twice just to make sure everything's going to blend. Because also when you add the yellow over top of it, it's going to hide a lot of the stuff that this didn't quite get good coverage on. So again, you don't have to be super precise with it, but you want to make sure you're happy with it. Because to be honest, in the end, that's really all that matters. Uh, like somebody was commenting on the last one I did about the browns not being quite movie accurate. But for me, what I've seen in pictures, it looked pretty accurate. So um, I'm still going to roll with it because I think, again, also think it helps with the overall color accentuations too. Um, and then for the back here, grabbing my phone because I'm kind of using the one I already have done as my base. So it starts at. The neck here and then I kind of just want to go along the back here up to about here so for the most part this is a dry brushing too I just go a little bit over that and then just kind of just start going over it's fine don't want to go too crazy because it doesn't highlight a lot of this, but just enough. That's going to show off that spine there. Coming along the back here. Do the same for the other side. So just a little bit here and there. More or less going to try to match my coverage with the other side. Just move down back of the kaiju.
And then it's this coloring of my like my preferred depth. Because right now it's you can see a little bit of the gray showing through. So gonna add a little bit more here and there. And just like I mentioned before, a lot of this stuff I'm gonna go over it with a yellow, just slightly. So that'll help to highlight it even more. It's looking pretty good. Next we do the underbelly. <laughs> And then I'll take a hair dryer to it. We'll cure all the stuff. Uh, I don't know if I got pictures still of the way the under tummy looked. Cool, I do. Alright, so for the most part, you want to be right here at the base of the throat. And then it comes along pretty much to the end of the tail here. So right about here is where I want to be. And then here. And then for the most part, it encompasses a lot of the stomach. I think I was mainly following the ridge here and then coming down. That's how I did it. So we'll start there and start working my dryer brushing. To the inevitable tape off point. Do the same for the other side. That's just filling in the rest of the stomach. Now one thing you might see is uh, some of these sections like you'll see, like I did dry brush this, so this was like already set up to match the rest of the skin, right? But I'm going back over with a lighter color. And a lot of the reason why I do that, because you can maybe try to be precise around it, but I don't want to. Be honest, like this is it's a lot more time uh, time efficient for me than say, like I'd rather go through, do make the figure look generic, and then start adding all my details. So I might spend a little bit more time than I really needed to, but then it also creates less work that I have to do later on with, it would eventually evolve into more cleanup because maybe I didn't quite get as close as I wanted to the black, uh, the dark grays. And I'd rather deal with trying to just add a little bit more to the, um, the original coat because if I didn't use this darker coloring, the parchment color here wouldn't look so dark. Because it would just be competing with that base gray instead of the dark gray for its undercoloring, which is going to darken it. But, like I mentioned, then I have to worry about being like in specific colors. I would have been super precise to begin with. Well, this just lets me kind of be as creative as I want with it. Move that down just slightly. And then I'm just trying to work my dry brushing to hide as much of the brush strokes as I can from this. Plus, when I go to clear coat it, that'll hide quite a bit of them too. <laughs> a little off center. But here you guys go with the under section. Here we got the top. Like I said, it's a lot of touch and go. But it's essentially just kind of get to where the coloring you're the most happy with and then kind of just roll with it from there. Alright, so we got that set up. We'll do the base here because this is just going to be dry brush black. So we'll do that right now because for the most part we'll be using the same black for the nails too. But I just want to lightly go over top of them. And I want to be careful not to get it onto the tail because I really don't want black on my tail here. Because then I'll definitely darken it up more than I really wanted to. Do the same for the undersection. And then what I'll do is some of the spots that I didn't quite get good enough coverage originally from when I uh, airbrushed my primer on. I'll just touch it up and just fill it in with the black here. 
And like I said, the key to here is just trying not to get the black on the actual tail. So I slowly, what I usually do is I'll slowly start working my brush towards the tail. I don't try to do that right off the get-go. It also helps to use a smaller brush too, so there's not as much extra here to possibly mess it up. I just realized I got some green somehow on <laughs> this part here, so uh, still gotta touch it up a little bit. Uh, next, I'll do my nails, because I already got my brush here, so why not? So here, I kind of like to stick, get my brush as close as I can to the base of the nail. And I just bring it forward. Uh, the primary reason I'm doing them black is to make them look bird-like. Um, I've seen some, like the original figure, it's more like human looking. And then even the X Plus I've seen, but movie wise, it looks kind of like this to me. And to be honest, I think it just kind of looks a little better too. Because you see, all the bone color and stuff on the majority of the kaiju, but then you, which makes it very like lizardy, um, very even looking. But then you have more like human mammal nails, <laughs> which is weird. So personally, I go with the black. I guess mostly, I guess like Godzilla has those kind of nails too. But I don't know. I always really like the way the the black and the dry brushing looks on this because it gives. Cause when I've done work on this guy, he'll kind of look like he has a like eagle talons, which is primarily what I'm going for. But once you do the base, like get the base part of the paint job all done for these guys. A lot of it then is just kind of just working everything around just to make sure you got complete coverage of the nails. Uh, I also tend to put a lot, of, a decent amount of paint on my brush too. Uh, mainly just to make sure I get good coverage in one go. And generally too when I'm doing this I work it around the nail when I'm done. So it's not going to have like a giant glob of black hanging out. Or too much black paint but it helps um, especially when I'm starting to paint these things with spreading the paint around because then it gives you a nice uh, a more crisp uh, nail line when you're done so there's his claws painted black got his tail done our hair dryer this real quick with the brush in my mouth all right so that's pretty much set we're gonna do the dry brushing for the nails now because when I go to seal the joints here to help protect the paint from scuffing off I'll do the nails too because and the reason I do the nails is they're the thing that's gonna have the most contact with the ground and the thing that's gonna easily rub off the most like there and maybe right here um, I'm not thinking about it. I probably should do that spot too which I don't think I've done on the other customs that I've done, but they usually get sealed pretty well, so it's not as big of a deal. But I can see this part rubbing off, so we'll, we'll take care of that too. Um, anyways, need some gray. I'll give you some base gray, a light gray would also do you fine. But for this guy, I kind of usually try to stick with a lot of the same colors. And then it's just Lightly going over the nail. I usually do the top here. Kind of coincide with the knuckle. Lightly brush the nail. I don't really want coverage. I, to be honest, I actually want it to kind of look like a crappy paint job. <laughs> because it coincides with the look more of Eagle Claws. Because they look like they got a bunch of scratches in them. And the scratches are tend to be of a gray color. So that's what I'm going for. So I just lightly go over it with the brush. Uh, primarily it's going to be your big nail you're going to want to focus on the most. Because that's the one that's definitely going to be the most predominant. The one that people are going to see. But hopefully if it focuses. 
We'll show the end results there. Um, I'm gonna save the mouth and the eyes for less because I don't really gotta worry about those as much in terms of sealing. So everything's mostly done here. Uh, I gotta do the browns, which I don't know where the paint went for that. Uh, what I've been using is this raw sienna. Uh, bust this guy up. Don't need a whole heck of a lot. Also need a larger brush. Um, for this, I don't really add a lot to it. I'm going to try to avoid getting it on the bone parts, but primarily on the skin. A little bit of brown on here. And then just lightly kind of dust it. Okay, maybe I need a little more brown on here. I don't want it all over, but just showing enough on here. It's not really like um, I'm making. I'm doing this to make her look dirty. It's just you could definitely tell there's browns in the skin here and there. Now so you'll see me kind of touching a lot. That's not really that big of a deal because um, if some of the brown comes off, it's fine because I want it to kind of be sporadic anyways, so I don't need to be super precise the way this brown's gonna lay on. And it dries pretty quick since I'm dry brushing. Let me try to smooth that part out a little bit more so it's not as brushy looking. But, got a little bit of brown on her. Just to help with the color variety. Do the same thing for the tail here. Next is going to be uh, doing all this rest of the ceiling, which I'll show you guys on one part, and then I'm just going to go through the rest and do it on my own. So we'll do it with the tail here. But what you're going to need is, is some a super glue. Uh, I use Loctite. You're going to need some accelerant spray, which I have here is the BS the Bob Smith's Industry Insta Set, which I am running kind of low on. And a bunch of these 99 cent little brushes, because you'll go through them quite a few of them doing this. Um, here is the bag to be precise. So I'm just going to grab a few of these guys out just to be prepared. And what I do is I take my super glue, I put it on top of this couple plastic couplet here. If you got any like plastic, whatever, you can use it. Uh, also, be forewarned, it will fume, so don't keep it next to your face when you're doing this. Because uh, it will give you a headache, but I'm going to take some pavement color Because I have a little bit of green here. We're going to cover that up and also if you have any errors This is the time to fix them So like I mentioned, I'm gonna touch that guy up Kind of just go around make sure that's covered uh, I'll be doing this for each of the joints So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pose the joint all the way down here and then I'll paint the dark gray over top of it i'll seal it move it seal it move it until i get everything covered like i'd want to and then what you do is you take your crap you take the 99 cent brush get some glue on it and then you just brush over the part that's going to go into the tail uh, what this is going to do is it'll keep the paint on the actual figure here and it will scuff off scuff off when you're moving so i try to keep decent amount like I'd usually go a little bit over because when I go to clear coat it it'll knock down whatever shine the glue is gonna give it um, but you also don't need to fill in make sure you fill in all the gaps like for the most part you just want to be covering whatever is gonna be your high point because uh, that'll be the thing that scuffs off so then I take my insta set spray it this will harden after a few couple seconds now but I'll give it a second. We're going to also do that to the same thing to the base of the tail here. Just because I don't want to. This is the part that's going to come into contact with stuff. So I will seal this properly when I'm done. But this will just help to mitigate some issues that we might have later on. Same thing. Spray my Insta set. 
because once this is in here, that isn't going to really come into contact with anything anymore. So now I can use my hair dryer to evaporate the Instaset. Should be able to just pop this in and we're good to go. So now I can pose this around and I don't have to worry about the paint job rubbing off. But anyways, we'll cut back to when I'm going to be doing the mouth and the eyes. Alright, so next we're going to do the eyes, which all I'm doing is just going to be some yellows, whites, and blacks. So we're going to start with our base yellow. And I'm just going to put it back where the eye was originally, but just not as big. Got to clean that up a little bit. Again, don't be afraid when you're doing this. If you mess up a little bit, you can always go back over it. That side turned out really good. This side, I got a little bit extra there. So I'll just take my uh, pavement that I still got some left over, clean that up. Uh, and actually, I missed a little bit at the top. So we'll touch that up real quick. Add little dots for the eyes. Nothing crazy, but I'm going to make them a little bit more forward facing. Like so. Do the same thing for the other eye. It's like the one was like a perfect circle. This one's almost a perfect circle. There we go. Those both look pretty good. I don't know what I just did, but I took the black off this one, so let's touch that up. Uh, and then I just need to add a little white for the shine. A little bit, because I don't want to go too crazy. Because I want to, when you're applying paint to the eyes, you don't want to have a bunch of overage. But I just want to add a little bit right around where that black is. Now nobody will suspect a thing except everybody that watched the video that I did do perfectly on the first try. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, finally, we got to do the inside of the mouth. Which what I'm going to do is... I think I still got my other red over here last time. I was so I used two reds. I got a flamingo and I got my uh, latex to kind of be my base coat, then we'll go over with the darker red, just make it a little more bloody. <sighs> Don't need a whole lot of this stuff. Just need a small head of brush. And then, the inside of my mouth, I'm just gonna add all my coverage. Plus I can see too where the glue is, so I know where to not to add the red uh, for inside of here. And I also see I'm gonna have to probably touch up a little spot right there. But we'll do that here in a few. Because I always kind of expect to do a little bit of touching up here and there before I'm done. But I'm just going to fill the inside of the mouth with this red. I might have to touch up the teeth when I'm done, which wouldn't surprise me. Because sometimes with these brushes you can get a little too excessive. But we're pretty much at the home stretch now. Uh, so I will just come back and show you guys the finished product because the only other thing I'll be doing is just dry brushing the darker over top of it so I'm just going to be lightly doing it uh, nothing super crazy I'm just got to make sure I get good coverage with this red on the bottom and then the dry brushing will just kind of fall into place after that so see you guys in a minute alright so now that we got a uh, where did that come from <laughs> alright so if you guys made it this far uh, here is the completed skull crawler i also did a war bats recently uh he'll get his own video at some point uh, because i do have an extra one for me to do but if you guys just kind of want to see more or less what a custom war bat would look like this is it pretty much kept the base coat mainly the same but did a bunch of dry brushing on it added the Linings for the wings, also recolored all the wings, and redid the entire head on this guy. Uh, but again, he'll get his own video, because uh, I plan on doing one for myself. I was just kind of trying to get that one out sooner than later. But here is the completed skull crawler with his little tongue kind of going all over the place. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of heat to <laughs> tone it down a bit. But overall, really pleased with that. Uh, you can also still pose the mouth. Uh, you can get it to close if you want to, uh, but for the most part, it's kind of meant to just be 
panning around open like so. See the detailing on the body looks really good. Can't even really tell that it was battle damaged anymore. Like anywhere. Arms turned out really nice. Claws look good. Uh, one thing I forgot is so the footage, if you guys might have noticed, is actually from two skull crawlers. Because I started customizing the one I did for a previous commission. Plus then I did this one. And some of the stuff I filmed on one, some of the stuff I filmed on the other. And I realized on both of them, after I started editing, that neither of them I showed how to actually sculpt this part. <laughs> so, sorry about that. But, pretty simple. Uh, the thing I changed between this one and the other one is the, the one I did previously. They were a little thinner. And they were a nightmare to try to sculpt. So these ones are a little bit thicker. But still turned out really nice as well. And then you can still pose this around. Without worrying about scuffing any of the paint off. Bottom looks really nice. And overall really pleased with it. You can see the eye here and my dog jingling in the background. Because I forgot to take off his collar. Because Shinji still comes down here hangs out with the videos. Then also I had a little bit of a... Extra sealing for the bottom of the hands too, just to make sure the paint doesn't scuff off there. But he'll be shipping out here in the near future, probably in the next day or two. I uh, still got to finish up because this is all for what uh, the Warbat, this, and the uh, the Jungle Lord was all for one person. So that'll be uh, leaving here. I just got to touch up one thing on the Jungle Lord real quick and then he'll be uh, going home. Well, to his home, anyways, not my home. <laughs> but, anyways, help us feed those guys by hitting the like button, subscribe, become a ranger today. We also got Instagram, Patreon, Pinterest, Facebook, guys, like you will the day with channel. Donate, we greatly appreciate it. And also make sure to hit that annotation uh, bell so you guys can uh, keep up with our current videos. Because YouTube sometimes doesn't like to tell you guys when we post things. But anyways, see you guys. Bye bye.